What's going on everybody? It is your boy Pack Mr. Blevin right here. This guy right here. So I'm not gonna keep you out here long, but this video right here that I'm about to show you guys 20 minutes long plus well 22 minutes and 51 seconds. So we're gonna watch this. We're gonna learn how to do the whole Easter egg of the last uh, last stream I just did the zero no shima. Uh, I don't think I said the first part right, but we're gonna watch how to do everything about it. But first can one of y'all please close my door? I got people sitting in my room with me, but they're not going to talk. I'm not going to talk throughout the video. We're going to sit here and we're going to watch this. And here we go. What's going on, guys? It's Patrick here. And today I'm bringing you my ultimate guide to Zetsubo no Shima. So what this video is, is going to be a complete guided tutorial for everything there is to do in this map. So first off, going to take you on a complete walkthrough of the map, just basically showing you where everything is, getting you down with the layout. And then from there, we're going to look at getting the power on and unlocking pack and punch from there we'll look at buildables then the skull last but not least the kt4 wonder weapon and its upgrade anyways guys if you want to leave a like on this video that would be great but let's get into it all right so first off we're going to start with a walkthrough of the map now when you spawn in here guys it's going to be just like your typical zombie spawn it's got the shiva the rk5 on the wall we've got a gobble gun and that's pretty much it now this is quite a larger spawn than normal and there's actually one other thing to note is that there's a bucket here which must be used for getting the temporary power on as well as watering plants now i won't get too in depth on the plants just yet but basically they're seeds that the zombies drop that you can plant and you'll just get different power-ups and drops from them. Uh, sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad. Now, we can go left or right out of the spawn. Both doors are 500 points, and we're just going to go left first out of convenience sake. So, going out of here, we've got an area that really doesn't have a whole lot. We've got a KRM on the wall, as well as a perk location. Now, it is important to note that these perk locations can change, and when you actually spawn in, you will see what perk this is as it drops from the plane, which is kind of cool. So, again, it's kind of like Shadows of Evil, where the perks can all change around, but typically what you'll get in that location is either stamina up or jug moving on to this area through here we've got the plane crash so this is kind of a dead end through this area but we've got some important stuff going on here so we've got a plane trap we've got a box location we've also got a gun on the wall and the other thing to note is we've got a spot for the skull of non sapwe which that will be a little bit later in the video so don't worry about that yet now that right there is a part for the gas mask which again i'll be showing and i'm just kind of pointing at the other areas that that can spawn if you're wondering right off the bat but again i'll show that a little bit later in the video and what that does so again this area is kind of a dead end. It's kind of a lesser important area, especially at the start of the map. Honestly, at this start, you really won't be going in here because it's just some things in there that you'll need to do later into your game. Now we're going to go up. This is the way more important area that we can take using this route. And this takes us to facility or laboratory A. So we can go right there. As you just saw me point, we can go left, we can go up the stairs, or we can go under this building. Now to the right here, that is like where I already pointed. It just kind of is like a little loop. It takes you to another area of the map. But if we were to go straight, you'll see there's the CUDA on the wall and we can actually go around. You'll see another staircase right there, which goes up to the same building as the other staircase that we saw. And then we're going to come back to the spider cove, which has water for the bucket, which you will need to turn on the temporary power. There's also a perk located right back there. It was covered in webs at the time, but that is another changing perk location. Now, coming back around here, you'll see that this, again, is just kind of a big loop. That was where we came from. That was where we just kind of did the loop. Now, we can go up the stairs, and this is where one of the spots for the power is. So, there is a temporary power in this map that we need to use to get the bunker door open where the actual power is. Now, essentially, what we have to do is get the bucket, pick up water, and put it in one of two locations, and the place you saw me do was the first. In this area, we also have a workbench, a gun on the wall, bucket location, and a gobble gum, as well as the zip line, which will take you down to the docks, however, the permanent power must be on before you can use that. So again, that was where we came from. Let's park over there, and uh, this is just kind of coming back through where we 
went. So you kind of see how this kind of this area all just sort of loops together. A little bit confusing. That goes back to spawn. That's the spider cove. And now we can go to the right, which we haven't taken yet. And again, you're going to see just another way to how this kind of just loops together. There's the facility where we were just at. Again, it just kind of is, is a little bit of a loop here. But you get the hang of it once you're here. Now going down here, this is going to take us to the bunker. As you can see, there is a red light and a green light. The green light is where we just turn the power on to that side. However, if we want to get that door open, we have to go to facility B, which I will show on our next route. Alright, so now we're going to go back to spawn, and instead of going left out of here, we're going to look at the path that we can take when we go out the right side door. Now, this is going to ultimately lead to the same place that we were just at, the bunker door, but again, there's a whole lot more over here. Now, I want to quickly note that orange glowing thing so what that is is a spore which will turn that zombie into the big mutated zombies that you may have seen now it's not always guaranteed but there is a possibility that if it gets hit it will turn into one of the big zombies so it's important to shoot those so that you don't get a whole bunch of those guys as they can be really annoying to deal with now in this area we've also got another perk location as you see there speed cola at this time and we have two ways that we can go so right or straight Straight will ultimately lead to the facility. This way takes us to the Skull of Non Sopway area. So this is one of the, this is the specialist weapon, I guess technically maybe a wonder weapon, but what this is is um, there's this kind of pillar area that we can use, and again, we'll go way in depth on this and how to do this later. But this area is kind of comparable to the plane crash on the left side of the map. So coming down here, this is where it gets a little bit complicated. This is again just kind of like a big loop and this is facility B or laboratory B. So a lot of areas that we can go around. As you can see this area has got a lot of different routes. So if we were to go straight through here we're going to just get this kind of super interconnected area. We can go up there on that staircase to facility B and that area again it just kind of all loops back into itself and where we just came from. Now this area however has got some important things. We've got another perk location which is of the changing or non-static variety so what this perk spot can be is again is like stamina up d double tap speed cola um, we've also got the ICR on the wall there so coming back down here we've got another spot for water which will be needed to get the other power door on so that we can open the bunker up again just coming back through here you can see how everything is just kind of super interconnected and you'll see that we just come back from exactly where we came now if we are to go up here we can go into the facility B again from this side so in the facility again it's the exact same as the facility A we've got this power generator that we have to use our bucket put water in and it will turn on half of the power so once we do both we've got about three minutes before the power is going to shut off again and within that time we have to get to the bunker essentially just turn the power on and then the bunker will be open which is the area that will actually get us the full power turned on for everything now the other thing to quickly note however is that this area is exactly the same as facility a it's got gobble gum a weapon a buildable and a bucket location so from here we can go up the hill and we will lead into the bunker we went right into the facility B there however if we were to go up here this will take us to where we just were on our left road at the end so we came from there however again once again we're at the bunker so going into the bunker there is a perk location you'll see it's jug right there however it can also be quick revive it's another non-static one and we have the gobble gum machine there's a $12.50 door here to the right which is not super important However, you are going to have to buy it if you want the shield. So there are three parts of the shield location here. Um, there's also a KN on the wall. There is a plane trap right at the entrance to this area. So now we're going to move into the more important part of this area, which is the Pack-a-Punch room and the sort of main bunker. So Pack-a-Punch must be drained. And there are three doors in this area, one to the left, one to the center, and one to the right. And each one 
has a Packet Punch paired in it. So first off, going into the left here, we are going to do the power. Now the power goes hand in hand with this first piece, so it's kind of convenient to just get both done at the start. So as you'll see, the power cannot be turned on, and we must go underwater. So essentially what you have to do is uncobweb this, and a little sort of challenge will start where you have to kill all the zombies underwater, make sure you don't die, and uh, essentially once that is done, the power will be able to turn on and a part will come out. Now I accidentally ended the round so I'm just going to skip ahead here but essentially as you can see I get this part we go ahead and turn on the power. Before we go on to the next two pack a punch steps I should note that there is a door in this area also that leads to the docks and this is just essentially an area that will take you up to facility A. It's also got a pedestal which is part of the skull, uh, again we'll get into that later, and a part for the gas mask. Now, again the very cool thing about this area is the zip line so you can go ahead take this and you will go up to facility A. But anyways, just wanted to quickly note that. Let's go back to these next two Pack-a-Punch spots. I quickly note that I got my part and I drain it and it will do like a third of the water down. So next up we have to go straight. So this is going to take us to the cave, which is where we can find our next part. There's also an HBK on the wall here. And down below there is actually a buildable for the wonder weapon. So we want to go through this door right here. Um, and we will find a gun on the wall as well as mule kick. And mule kick will always spawn there. Just an important little part to note here. So what we got to do is go swimming for a cogwheel, which will help us drain the water. Now, this area, you can die in the water again, um, but what you want to find are these sort of water bubbles, as you see right there. It will basically just give you extra oxygen when you pop them. So you can find your part, take it back to the Pack-a-Punch area, drain the water again, and you will be two-thirds of the way done. Now as far as the last step goes, of course we have to go to this final door which is located on the right and this is probably the easiest step. We simply just have to knife these cocoons. Now in this area there is an ICR on the wall, we also have the last workbench and the last water which is the purple color. So to get this final Pack-a-Punch part what you want to do is go around knifing these cocoons and zombies will essentially drop out of them. Now unfortunately these zombies don't give you any points but still knife them and you'll eventually find the part. It's usually like your fourth or fifth hit, you'll find it, there it is. You could pick it up, take it to the Pack-a-Punch, drain your third and final tap and now the Pack-a-Punch will be open, you're good to go. Alright guys, so we're going to move away from the walkthrough and start looking at the buildable parts. Now the first thing that I want to look at is the shield. There are three parts to this and the first one can be found below facility A. And this is the part you're looking for. It can be found right there to the right just on that wall behind it. And the third spot for this is located on this pillar right here. Now the second part that we're going to be looking at can be found at facility B and is located on three different trees. So the first spot is right there, the second is just right there, and the third and final spot is located just up the hill there on that last tree up top. And the last part that we're looking for is in the door just to the right when you walk in the bunker. And this is going to be, again, in three different areas. The first spot that can be is on that rock right there. The second is going to be in a little pile of rubbish right there. And the last in spot that I found it is going to be right there. Now, once you've got your three parts, you can take it to any buildable station around the map. I chose to take it to the cocoon area, but honestly, I probably recommend doing it at facility B. Build it, and there is your shield. Alright, the second buildable that we're going to look at is the gas mask. Now, this is a new buildable, and how it works is when you get hit by these spores, it basically makes it so that your character doesn't flinch, which when you flinch, you can't actually perform any actions. Now, the first part for this is found at the plane crash, and you're looking for that rope right there. So, of course, the first part is right there, second spot that we found is right there, and the last is just up against that wall over there. The second spot that you can find a part is going to be down at the docks, and you're looking for this like bolt thing, so it's right there. Uh, the other spot that it could be found is on that other crates, and then it can also be found just back here in this area. And last but not least, moving down to the third part, this is going to be found 
at the sort of laboratory B area. Now the first spot it is is on that crate right there. The second spot is going to be over towards this meteorite and I'm pretty sure this is actually where I find it. It's going to be right in that location right there. And then the last spot that you can find this piece is going to be on that crate right there. So again, once you find all three pieces, you can take it to any buildable spot, build it, and you have the gas mask. Now important to note that this actually runs out like the shield, so you'll have to get it over and over once it breaks. Anyways, let's move on. Okay, so next up guys, we're going to look at the skull of non Sopway and how to build this. This is the specialist weapon that is basically uh, capable of mesmerizing, which sort of just stuns the zombies temporarily, and also vaporizing, absolutely destroying the zombies. It's an awesome, awesome weapon. Let's show you how to build it. So what you have to do is go to the area of the map with these skulls and this sort of monument in the middle here. And you're going to notice these four dark skulls that need to be cleansed. And there's going to be a symbol below each one. And essentially what you have to do is take each skull with the symbol to its corresponding pedestal area and you have to cleanse it so zombies are going to come out it's kind of like the origins generators and you just have to basically stop them from hitting the skull and again you have to do this in four areas so the areas are at the spawn at the propeller place with the airplane crash at the zip line like the docks the bottom area and the last one is going to be located down below the green pod, guys, just where you build the wonder weapon and where we went diving in this location right here. So do this four times, take the skulls to the pedestals, and this area is going to open up down below. Start the ritual, and you're going to have to kill all these keepers. Now, the keepers are a one-shot kill, so they're very, very easy. And essentially, you just have to survive here and get as many kills as you can just to feed the skull. It's not a time-based thing. It's a kill-based thing. So just essentially sacrifice the keepers. You'll eventually be good to go, and you can pick up your skull of non sopway Alright, so before we go over the KT4 Wonder Weapon, I just wanted to quickly explain how the plants work and which plants you can make. So the first plant that we can do is the green water plant. Now, what you do is essentially just plant your plant and for three rounds in a row, give the plant green water and you will get this plant which can hold crawlers for you and just kind of save your round. The next plant that we have is the purple plant and this can be acquired from giving a plant purple water three times in a round this is the attack plant and it basically just distracts zombies and will help you kill them the last basic plant is the blue plant and this is the reward plant and again you just simply give it blue water from the cove now the last cool plant that you can make is acquired from giving the plant all three different colors on three different rounds and what this will give you is a fruit which will give you a fifth free perk. Now the fifth one that we have is basically a tombstone from transit and what it does is when you die it's like this big egg and um, when you die you go into it and you're actually reborn with all your guns and all your perks and to create this one you have to do green and then blue and then green. That's the only way it will work. Now we've just finished the Easter egg and there is actually a sixth one that is kind of not really legit but it's just an upgrade of the blue one so when you're doing the blue one if you shoot it with the upgraded Wet wonder weapon um, basically that will give you an even better chance and it will give you a free perk bottle all right so the kt4 itself is actually very basic to build it's just a three-part wonder weapon however the upgrade process is going to take a little bit more time however first obviously we got to look at the initial build before we can go upgrading it so there are three pieces located around the map the first one is very very easy easy essentially what you want to do is come down to facility B and really just kind of wait around or two just kind of wait around and you're going to find a zombie that is glowing and kill him he will give you a vial which is the first part for this now the second one is probably the most complicated and again it's super basic all you have to do is come over to facility A and lower the cage so once you do that essentially a, a spider you want to lower it in and it will get trapped then go back up to the top 
and essentially you're just going to reel them up and you're going to extract the venom. So to lower the cage, you just have to press the button that you see my player doing right there and also um, just to raise it back up again, hit that again. It will come up, bringing the spider up, it will extract the juice from him and then you will get the second part. Now as for the third, we have to go back to that swimming area that we were at, if you guys remember that for the piece, for the Pack-a-Punch, well we have to go back down here again, except we want to go all the way to the very bottom and head down to this sort of like crystallized cave area and there's going to be a plant at the bottom here and that is our third part. So from here all you have to do is just swim back up to the top, run across the room past Mule Kick and there is the buildable table, build it and you will get your KT4 wonder weapon. Now this is actually a four person wonder weapon however only one person can get it for free. If anyone else wants to get this gun you must use the box. Anyways, that's basic. Now let's move on to the upgrading process, which is a little bit more complicated. So the first step that we have to do is acquire our hey, lightning here, shield. And in order to do this, we must first complete our three player challenges. So if you are unfamiliar with the challenges, they are these trials that are located at the skull area. And they're very, very reminiscent of the challenges on Origins. So they'll say things like get 30 kills underwater or kill a zombie before it goes and evolves into the big thrasher guy. It's just various challenges like that and you must complete all three for your player. Now in four player some people have been saying that you have to get all four people to do this. I'm not exactly sure as I really only play solo so if you get one person to do it and it's not working basically just try to get the rest of the three people to do it but once you have done that lightning will start spawning down at the area pull out your shield and once the lightning hits it will electrify it from here go to facility b and lightning smash that pad right there it's going to open up the cage you can hop in it and it will actually close for you and start descending However, it's going to descend another level into this area where you can pick up your first piece in that skeleton located right there. For the next step, you want to go to the spider cove and shoot the blue webbing with your KT4 and it's going to take you down into this giant boss fight. Now once you kill this giant spider, be careful, it is definitely hard, you want to go in with some good stuff. Basically go up to the spider's mouth, press square, and you will grab his tooth. For the next step, go to the sewer located down by the Wonder Weapon build spot and you're going to want to press square on these glowing blue rocks located to the right of my screen right there and you will acquire Rainbow Water. From here, you must take your skull of non Sopway and mesmerize down in the cocoon room. So this is going to reveal a blueprint of the map, which is actually very, very interesting. So go way back here, right by the purple water, and you're going to want to go up to this and basically, again, mesmerize, and you will spawn in this blueprint of a map. Now, this is the final part. Head back down to this crystal cave, and once again, you're going to want to mesmerize and you're going to want to mesmerize this wall right here and it's going to open up revealing another part for a seed. So this is like any other plant, you simply just put a seed in, water it with the rainbow water, come back in next round, water it again and do that once more time and you will acquire the plant. Now once you get that, take it to the buildable table right beside where you built the KT4 and you will acquire your upgraded wonder weapon the Mezimune and this guys is way way better than the original it's got more no I don't actually think it has more ammo but it does way more damage and it just simply lasts way longer it's, it's much better it is a little bit of a process but I would honestly say that it is worth it as it's a very powerful weapon but anyways guys that is all I have for you today I really hope that you enjoyed this video this took me a lot of time but it was a lot of fun and honestly I just absolutely love doing these ultimate guides for you because I know how much that they help you just having all the information in one spot so if you haven't left a like yet on this video that would be super appreciated and hey feel free to subscribe to the channel while you're at it but guys that's all I have for you if you do have any questions for you feel free to list them down in the description and I can probably put them in the description because you never know if there may be another thing that pops up or whatever but anyways guys thanks for watching talk to you later peace out So guys, there you have it. <clears throat> That's how you do that. I honestly have to rewatch it because that looks so complicated.
But I'm not taking any credit for that, for this video right here that I made. I'm giving all the credit to that guy. His The link for his channel will be down in the description below if I can get to it. Because I don't, I don't remember what his name was. But, yeah. But I don't think that was an Easter egg in there too. But we're going to, we're just going to. We're just gonna throw the Easter egg part away for now, but we're gonna get done. We're gonna get the Easter egg. We're gonna get the Easter egg video there soon. I don't know, but I'm about to go to the store, guys, and I'll be back. But this video won't be uploaded by the time I get back. So, so I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Why not leave a like? Go to his channel, subscribe to me, cause he that video had like 900,000 views. So subscribe to me, cause he don't need no more right now, unless he's like, I don't know how many subscribers he got, but he got a lot of views on it. But so you know, you know, he got a lot of uh, subscribers. But guys, I really hope you guys enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. I'm Pack Bitch Eleven. Go to GameStop if you need this game. I mean, not GameStop, Game Exchange if you want it cheaper. Either way, it's just, Game Exchange is where you want to go. Alright guys, so see you later, and hope you have a good one.